Hello all and welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover Virtual Private Cloud or VPC followed by a quick demo. Virtual Private Cloud or VPC helps you provision a logically isolated section of the AWS cloud where you can launch AWS resources in a virtual network defined by you. VPC provides you with a complete control of your virtual networking environment, including the selection of your own IP address ranges, creation of subnets, configuration of route tables, and gateways. VPC supports both IPv4 and IPv6 in your VPC for secure and easy access to resources and applications. Note, VPC is a regional service and it spans across all the ACs in that region only. Availability zones are multiple isolated locations within the same region. You can go over the details for VPC, subnets, sizing, route tables in the blog post. In this demo, we are going to create a VPC step by step by creating a custom VPC with internet gateway, subnets, configuring route tables, and launching an EC2 instance with a sample site deployed. Let's navigate to the VPC management console. When you start using AWS, it provides you with a default VPC in each AWS region. A default VPC comes with a public subnet in each AZ an internet gateway and DNS resolution and host names enabled. However, we are going to create our first VPC step by step. Let's go ahead and create our first VPC. Let's click on the create VPC option. We will use the VPC only option for now and create each component step by step. We can also use the VPC and more option, which allows you to create VPC, subnets, route tables, and gateways through a single interface. However, I will demonstrate this option in the VPC pairing video. For now, let's select VPC only. Let's name our VPC VPC A. We are going to use an IPv4 CIDR block of 10.0.0.0 slash 16. The CIDR blocks should be assigned within the RFC 1918 range with an allowed block size between slash 16 and slash 28. We do not need IPv6 CIDR blocks for now. VPC allows you to set tenancy options for the instances launched in it. Tenancy defines how EC2 instances are distributed across physical hardware and it affects pricing. By default, the tenancy option is shared. If the dedicated option is selected, all the instances within it are launched on a dedicated hardware overriding the individual tenancy setting. Let's go ahead and create the VPC. And our VPC A has been created. The state is available. Let's go through different attributes and configuration. AWS assigns a VPC ID. The state is available. The DNS hostname is disabled. DNS hostname helps determine whether the VPC supports assigning public DNS hostnames to instances with public IP addresses. We will enable the DNS hostname soon. DNS resolution helps determine whether the VPC supports DNS resolution through the Amazon provided DNS server and it's enabled by default. Tenancy as we discussed is default which is shared. DHCP option set gives you control over the DNS servers, domain names or the network time protocol servers used by the devices in your VPC. VPC creates a main route table and a network ACL. Route table defines rules termed as routes which determine whether network traffic from the subnet would be routed. The network ACL acts as a virtual firewall at the subnet level. 
we have the IPv4 CIDR block. There is no IPv6 address for this VPC. Let's edit the VPC settings. We are just going to enable the DNS host names for now. The DNS host names and DNS resolution is now enabled for our VPC A. Let's go ahead and create our internet gateway and attach it to our VPC. An internet gateway is a horizontally scaled, redundant and highly available VPC component that allows communication between instances in your VPC and the internet. It imposes no availability risks or bandwidth constraints on our network traffic. Let's name our gateway as VPC A IGW and let's go ahead and click on the create internet gateway. It's created but the state is detached. Let's go to actions and attach it to our VPC. Let's select VPC A. It will only show the VPC with no internet gateways. Let's attach it and the state has now changed to attached. Remember, you can only attach one internet gateway to the VPC. Let's go ahead and create two subnets in the US East 1A AZ. Subnets span a single AZ and they cannot span across AZs. An availability zone is a distinct location engineered to be isolated from failures in other AZs. Let's create the subnets. Let's select VPC A. Let's name our subnet VPC A, public subnet US East 1A. Let's select the AZ as US East 1A with a CIDR block of 10.0.0.0/24, which gives us a total of 256 IP addresses for the subnet. Let's add a new subnet. Let's name it VPC A Private Subnet US East 1A within the same AZ as US East 1A with a CIDR block of 10.0.1.0/24. Remember that merely naming the subnets public or private do not make them public or private. The subnet being public or private depends on whether it has internet connectivity or not. Let's go ahead and create our subnets. The subnets are now in the state available. Let's go ahead and create and configure our route tables. Route tables define rules, termed as routes, which determine where network traffic from the subnet would be routed to. Each VPC has a main route table with the attribute main marked as yes. Let's edit the name for our main route table as VPC A main route table. The main route table has a default route for local that is already defined. The default local route cannot be deleted. All subnets if not explicitly associated to the route table are implicitly associated with the main route table. Each subnet within a VPC must be associated with a single route table at a time, while a route table can have multiple subnets associated with it. Let's create a custom route table. Let's name it VPC A custom route table. Let's select VPC A and let's create the route table. Let's go ahead and edit the subnet associations. We are going to map the public subnet to our custom route table. Let's edit the routes for our custom route table. We are going to add a route with destination anywhere with the target being our internet gateway. Let's save the changes and the route table has been created. The route table has two entries, one destination anywhere through a network connection internet gateway and the other is the default route. The main route table 
only has a local route definition for now. Let's go ahead and do an explicit subnet association for our main route table. We are going to map the private subnet to our the main route table. So now we have two route tables, a main route table with no network connections mapped to the private subnet and a custom route table defined that has a network connection to the internet gateway with the public subnet mapped to it. Let's check our default network ACLs and security groups. We have a default network ACL created and it is associated with our two subnets. It allows all the inbound traffic and it allows all outbound traffic. Let's go ahead and check the security group. We have a default security group created for VPC A. And it too allows all traffic with the inbound and all outgoing traffic. So the default network ACL and security groups for VPC A allows all inbound and outbound traffic. Let's go back and explore the resource map view. We have our VPC A created with two subnets in the US East 1A AZ. The public subnet is associated with custom route table with a network connection to the internet gateway and the private subnet is associated with the main route table with no network connections. Let's navigate to our EC2 management console. We are going to launch a small instance in our public subnet hosting a website and we are going to access it using the public IP. Let's launch our instance. Let's name it VPCA public web server. Let's use Amazon Linux AMI. Let's use the 64-bit architecture. T2 micro instance type. Let's select the demo key pair. By default, the instance is mapped to the default VPC. However, let's edit the network settings and map it explicitly to VPC A. Let's map it to the subnet in the US East 1A AZ. Let's enable the public IP. We are going to create a new security group for this instance that would allow SSH and HTTP from anywhere. Let's name the security group as VPCA Web Server Security Group. The SSH rule is fine. Let's add a new security group rule that allows HTTP from anywhere. Let's navigate to the advanced details. We are going to use a script in our user data to set up a small website on this instance. This will just install an HTTPD service on an instance. The rest of the default configurations are fine. Let's go ahead and launch our instance. Let's wait for the instance state to be running and the status check passed. The instance state is running and the status check passed now. Let's copy the public IP address for the instance. And let's try to browse the site. Currently it doesn't have any SSL, so we're going to access it using HTTP. And it works. And that's it for the demo. So we have now created our first VPC, attached an internet gateway, defined public and private subnets, defined route tables, and checked on the default security groups and network ACLs. I hope you enjoyed the demo. Thank you all. All right, that was it. Thank you for watching. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For any feedback, please leave a comment down below. To see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.